Now, this may have slipped past you, but it is election time. Tomorrow, polling begins in the City of London. And it's not just the people who live there that get a vote. The Square Mile's big businesses will also get the chance to have their say at the ballot box. That's just one of the unusual aspects of the way the City of London Corporation is run, an institution that's older than the House of Commons and the Church of England. Traditionally, the corporation's elected representatives are all independents, and the major parties don't field candidates. But this time, that is changing. Here's Andrew Cryan. Running the heart of the capital's financial industry is the City of London Corporation. Not technically a local authority, over the years it's evolved to do three things. Number one, it looks after the square mile, like a local council might, but with a bit of a twist, including running their own police force. Number two, it's charged with underpinning the city's financial interests. And number three, running special projects across the capital. Hampstead Heath is a good four miles from the heart of the city of London, but it's still owned and run by the corporation, as are other parts across the city, Epping Forest, Highgate Woods and so on. But it's not just green spaces the corporation control. They also sponsor three city academies, all outside the square mile. They've got thousands of units of social housing on the books. They even run the animal reception at Heathrow Airport. All things which help make the corporation the unique body that it is. Another way is the voting structure. It's the only public body in the UK where businesses have a vote and not just the local residents. 15,000 of the total votes come from business and 6,500 from local residents. A system designed to reflect the fact that only 9,000 people live in the square mile compared to 340,000 who work there. Representatives are unpaid and are all independents. That is until now. Tomorrow sees the election for so-called common councilmen, or at least elections of sort. Alternative candidates have only challenged half the wards. But in some of those, the Labour Party has, for the first time in its history, organised a series of candidates to stand. We've set out a manifesto. We've set out um, our aims and ambitions uh, for standing as uh, Labour Party members. Um, and uh, that's what we intend to stand by, and we've produced a little pledge card um, which uh, underlines that and sets out clearly what we're seeking to do. A degree of professionalism these elections aren't used to, and something not everybody welcomes. I think being independent uh, is important to the city. Uh, we need to work with the government of the day, um, and of course uh, we are a significant authority, and therefore we do get involved in, uh, in, in national issues. But. Uh, national issues for the good of the country rather than uh, playing party politics. But one resident doesn't like the way the corporation acts locally. The services that they provide here are very good, but I think the problem is that the residents, the, the, the local population's interests tend to get overlooked very often. And although they'll say that they, they're not overlooking it, that they are listening to us and so on, the reality is that they will very often take decisions about things which are very much contrary to the interests of the people that live here. But isn't that what they, they should be doing? There are 350,000 workers who come here every day compared to less than, than 10,000 residents. I mean, doesn't that, doesn't that just make sense? Um, well... That's, their, that's very much their argument. But what we would say is that we're usually ignored. Well, I think that's pretty unlikely, as I said, when uh, about a quarter of our members are residents and they are very vocal and they know what's going on and they do make sure their views are heard and the businesses make sure their views are heard as well. You know, we're a mixed community. We have, we have those who live here and we have those who work here and I think we should pay attention to the views of both of them. The City of London Corporation is steeped in history and blessed with special privileges. Exactly what impact the Labour Party make in this election will probably be best judged by the historians. Well, with me is the Conservative MP for the cities of London and Westminster, Mark Field, and the Labour London Assembly member for City and East, John Biggs. And I want to start with you, John. Uh, the system works fine. Why change it? The City of London does provide pretty good quality services, but there is a growing residential community there who come to me and I think they come to Mark Field as well grumbling about some of the problems they have with vertical drinking establishments, with the lack of affordable housing and it seems to me we live in a democracy, people should have a right to choose between different slates, between different programmes for the administration of the city, no problem with that at all. But they have to choose Labour don't they, you're well, fielding no, no, no. Labour candidates, well, um, no, what okay. about Conservative candidates, what's happening there? Well, uh, I don't disagree with what John says, I mean in an open democratic society choice and competition are at the heart of it all. However, um, historically, the neutrality 
political neutrality of the City of London I think has worked well. We have uniquely the business vote. Now, we could go through the arguments about whether or not it's desirable to have a business vote. But uh, as has been pointed out in your film, um, we, it does a huge amount of work well beyond the the square mile itself. You know, if you look at uh, West Ham Park, you look at Queen's Park, you know, the, the best run local authority parks in Newham and Brent, respectively. You look at the academy work, the huge amount of work the City of London Police does on, a, on an international as well as on a, a national scale. Uh, so all of that sort of works pretty well. And I just think that if we have a, if we do have uh, party politics intruding in, in the City of London Corporation, the real worry is, I think, that some of that uniqueness will, will be lost. You say it does good work outside the city, sure. but what about the people who live there? That, well, they're I, not getting uh, the deal they want. I, 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 <clears throat> one, again, I heard on the, on the film there, Mr Mason, I'm very sorry that he, as a a resident of the Barbican, he doesn't feel he's getting a good deal. That, I have to say, is very much a minority view within this corporation. Most of the uh, surveys, the independent surveys done by Morrie, suggest that the City of London Corporation is second only to Wandsworth in terms of the level of satisfaction amongst local residents. Um, and I think that uh, it, works, it works well as, a, as an authority. I, I can see, listen, if we started with a blank sheet of paper, I'm sure you wouldn't have the way the Corporation of London is, is organised. But going back again to your earlier piece, I suspect the Corporation of London will, will outlive both the House of Commons and the Church of England in the centuries right. ahead. Well, well, let's start <coughs> again then. What, what's going wrong here? What are well, residents moaning about? With, I mean, with respect to Mark Field, his argument is almost an argument for the divine right of kings. You know, they're, they're benign rulers and so we should let them get on with it. And the fact is that life involves difficult, gritty decisions. The City of London is quite a prosperous place. Not massive poverty there, but there are people on low incomes. So, so people don't have the sort of grinding problems that we might have in other parts of the capital. But they have a right to exercise choices. And, and, and I do get lobbied by residents. And I, it seems to me absurd that a businessman who is an American citizen, perhaps, works in a, an American bank in the city, has a vote to decide who runs the city. That seems to right fly in the face of the concept of democracy. But there are 350,000 people yes, coming okay. in there every single day to work. Mm. Don't but, they have well, okay, the right I, to some kind I, of voice? I represent people on the Isle of Dogs as well, and, and there are about 100,000 people work there as well. They, they don't have a vote on the Isle of Dogs. They vote in wherever they live. And... Um, Business does have a right to be listened to, and it needs to be in the right sort of context. The city does an excellent job speaking up for the financial sector, but I think it does so at risk of neglecting some of those very real concerns of residents about affordable housing, about the quality of life, about the environment, in an area where, where quite a few thousand people live well, as well. Whatever way it goes, party politicisation, and say you have a certain party ruling the City of London, what's that going to do to the relationship with central government, do you think? Well, I think that's, that's part of the problem. And I, I should, should perhaps point out that it's not just financial services that are in the city. You've got the insurance services, you've got a whole range of different services there, and a lot of small and medium-sized businesses. It's not just the big investment bankers from uh, international banks who are going to be voting, but actually small, long-standing businesses that have been in the square mile who have a business vote. The other thing that's very important to stress is that uh, as part of the arrangements for the vote, six of the 25 wards are predominantly residential. There's no question of those wards uh, and indeed their councillors uh, being uh, sort of overturned or overpowered and overshadowed to a large extent uh, by the business vote. You it's see, I wonder whether that's actually true. In the Barbicans, in the Ports Open, I just, I just the want the to problem, give you this quote from, 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 admittedly, from the Labour Manifesto, yeah. but it's a quote from the Financial Times of the Chief Planner for the Corporation of London, Peter Winreese. Mm. He says, we don't want residents to hamper our ability to put together large-scale office development schemes. That sounds like business having more of a sway than residents. No, I, I, this, I, I, that was a selective quote uh, mm -hmm. to do with the St Alphage um, uh, house development for, for J.P. Morgan, which actually has, uh, has since bitten the dust with, right. with, with the, the credit cards going forward. But, but, no, but it was said as part and parcel of a, a much broader mm -hmm. context to say that there were some important aspects about trying to maintain elements but, but of big financial just, services in respect, the city as we well as having a, a thriving residential We've population. been hearing a lot about the hedge funds recently, and now they tend to be based in Mayfair which is another part of your constituency, which is part of a democratically elected local authority. I haven't heard them complaining that their lack of a business vote is in any way preventing them from doing their business. I mean, I, I, maybe, it, maybe they should have been. It's interesting as well, though, this, this perception it's, it's, it's of bank, the banking industry, whether it be right or wrong, as sure. complex and closed. Do you think that's sort of being reflected here in, in the view of perhaps the Corporation of London, and this is mm -hmm. why people are suddenly getting involved? Well, I think the critics are turning around and saying that it's all about banking industry. As I've tried to point out, actually banking, although it's an important part of what the city does, it's only a very small part. Um, you know, we've got insurance, we've got a whole lot of other industries, uh, increasingly creative industries that are, are based uh, in the square mile as well. Uh, and obviously we want those industries to thrive, particularly as hopefully they will be the, the big jobs uh, producers of, of the future. I think it works pretty well. I mean, I, I, it's partly an historical reason. And the reality is, of course, and 
200 years ago, a quarter of the population of London as a whole okay. lived in the city. 180,000 people lived there. As John, we're now down to a much smaller number. John, it's very quick. We're running out of time. Mm -hmm. Will this change anything if you get a few councilmen there? I think it will open to greater scrutiny. It will start raising some of the issues of real concern to people who live and work okay. in the city of London. We've got to leave it there. John Briggs, Mark Field, thank Thanks you very much. much. That's all from City Hall. Back to John.